What am I? A robot. In 1942, Isaac Asimov, a Russian sci-fi novelist, writes a short story called Run Around, where he introduces three principles designed to rule robots. Those rules that will later be known as the three laws of robotics read as follow. But should there be a fourth rule that could read as a robot must pay its taxes as to preserve the first, second and third law? Now this is not science fiction anymore. Artificial intelligence has been rapidly growing for the past few years and it's now ready to impact our lives. In the book The Technological Singularity, Professor of Cognitive Robotics Murray Shanahan describes how one day regular humans might be overtaken by AI machines, and he investigates different scenarios of AI expansions. One of those expansions might be the impact AI will have on the economy and on jobs, creating unemployment and bigger inequality if nothing is done to invert that. But robots don't have to be labeled as bad. They have great productivity and efficiency, which can transform to more wealth added to our economies. So if this wealth is handled properly and evenly redistributed, the robots could be one of the tools to combat inequality, a theme I'll go into further details in my next video. But let's back up to 2009 when Google started its first automated car project. Then in 2013, Google Ventures invested $258 million into Uber, the online transportation network company. And in 2016, Uber bought Auto, a self-driving truck startup for $682 million. Do you start to see the pattern? Or take Amazon, for instance, the electronic commerce and cloud computing company. In 2013 and 14, they filed two patents regarding a system for tracking removal or replacement of items at inventory locations. At the end of 2016, Amazon drops a video on YouTube featuring the new grocery store of the future Amazon Go featuring this kind of technology. Now, Amazon could expand this kind of stores and license the idea. Amazon Web Services, the biggest part of the company, licenses its website infrastructures on which it collects billions. From that point on, you can see that this technology could easily be used for the whole grocery and retailing world. So it's clear that the general trend is going towards automation. This video is not going to further focus on that, since there are countless of videos on the topic but technology will replace our arms and our brains. Robots drive, can do a lot of a lawyer's job, be multi-purposes, write effective prescriptions, make art and music. Some will also say that after each technological revolution, new jobs are created, which is true, but those new sectors still remain a tiny proportion of the major employment sectors in the US and in the world in general. So recently the idea of taxing robots has been debated. Bill Gates, the billionaire and founder of Microsoft, said he would be for such a tax. The European Union is also concerned about the developing of AI and politicians like French socialist candidate Benoit Hamon is also mentioning it. So is it a good idea to tax a robot and how would you tax it? Well, first you've got to tax something, and the definition of a robot is currently flawed. Some define it as any piece of equipment that has three or more degrees of movement, or others, such as the European Parliament, focus on the autonomy of the machine. So it has to acquire autonomy, uh, it has to be self-learning, it has to have a physical support, it has to adapt its behaviors and actions to its environment, Fair enough, then you have to ask yourself why you're taxing it. Well, if robots take the jobs that humans do, they're replacing someone, the human, who paid taxes on his work, and if the robot doesn't pay its income tax as the human did, the state will have a deficit to finance its programs. And it seems logical that if a robot produces some kind of work, it should be taxed as well. Now, the main argument against such tax is to say that it would halt progress by slowing innovation. Some even go further and say that robots will overall create more jobs, stating that these technologies will allow industries to expand and make more products and address major unmet needs. And driving down prices for lawyers with Ross, for instance, would be good for people who couldn't afford a good legal defense in the past. And thus, instead of taxing, they put forth different ideas. The government could invest in companies that use robots, so that the wealth produced will come back to the state and then to its citizens. You could see this in richer countries, but a technological revolution of this scale has to be coordinated. States will lose revenue from the taxes of the workers, 
and the unemployment contributions will have to grow due to a loss of jobs, even in richer countries. In the EU, for instance, that has states with wide social security programs in place that need to be funded. Seeing the different repercussions on all the citizens, an effort should be made to control this new technology. And taxing and regulating seems to be the strongest tools that a government has to ensure that this wealth is redistributed. This is not to say that automation is bad or should be slowed down. It's just bound to happen. But then you can think about what it could fund. For the past decade, politicians have used creation of jobs as an electoral tactic, and sometimes rightfully. And yes, jobs cre job creation is good, but in light of future technological developments, we'll have to carefully think about how this change can have a good impact on the population. This is controversial, but nonetheless, maybe it's the end of the era of job creations at all costs. After all, a lot of people want to keep their jobs not because they're enjoyable, but because they feed them. Our countries have never been so rich and so unequal. The next decades to come face a lot of tough challenges, so maybe it's time to think about those. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and see you soon.